The product I have for review today could possibly be the most important liquid CPU cooler launch this year. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 was and still is a very popular choice with enthusiasts because of its solid thermal performance, low noise and low price, which makes it a great all-round AIO cooler. In this video we take a look at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3, we put it to the test on both our AMD and Intel test benches and see what improvements Arctic brings with this new model. Unleash the power of RTX 4080 Super with superior liquid cooling. So as I said in the intro to this video, this is possibly the most important new liquid CPU cooler to be launched this year. The popular Liquid Freezer 2 is outgoing and in comes its replacement, the Liquid Freezer 3. It's available in two different colors, you can get it in black or you can get it in this white version. There's also a 420, 280 and 240 millimeter option. The 360 is available for $150 US. In the UK, you can pick it up from Amazon UK for just under 100 pounds, which sounds like great value. It features an improved copper cold plate with increased fin volume and water channels optimized for heat dissipation, an improved VRM fan that is larger and has an adaptive speed range of between 400 to 2,500 RPM, a 38 millimeter Thick aluminium radiator featuring an increased fin stack and pre installed 120 millimeter Arctic P series ARGB static pressure fans. The Intel mount includes an LJ1700 contact frame to ensure CPU is evenly locked in the socket for improved contact with the CPU cooler base. It also comes with two connecting cables that allows users to individually connect the fan, pump, and VRM fan for independent control or an all in one connector to control the whole unit via a single motherboard fan header. So this is the new Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 and as you can quite clearly see straight away it has quite a big visual change from the Liquid Freezer 2. I always felt that the plastic on the CPU block of the Liquid Freezer 2 looked a little cheap to me. This is definitely straight away it looks like an improvement in aesthetics. The CPU block is completely different. It's much larger. The top still does include a VRM fan but the VRM fan now is inside this piece that is removable from the actual base plate and the water block. On here you can see it's got kind of a fan design when you take it out of the box you almost think that that is the VRM fan but it's not that is just for aesthetics. The one thing with this is you can't change the orientation of that and you can't really change the orientation of the installation so it has to be installed to the CPU socket with the tubes facing at the bottom so inside this top cover is the VRM fan and you can see that is the VRM fan there you can just see it moving so it's much larger the VRM fan on this compared to the liquid freezer 2 on there you can see there's some contacts so when you push this into place on the CPU block it actually makes contact it illuminates with ARGB lighting and it activates the fan. It's mostly made out of plastic. You can see some bit of wiring down here, small circuit board, and then the, the top actually holds to the base plate by a, a couple of magnets that connect to these screws. Looking at the actual cooler itself, the radiator is very similar in looks to the Liquid Freezer 2. It's a 38 millimeter thick aluminium radiator, but it's said to have a more dense fin stack compared to the one on the Liquid Freezer 2. The fans are the Arctic P-Series ARGB fans with a speed range of 200 to 2000 RPM. The pump has a speed range of 800 to 2000 2800 rpm according to the official specifications and as you can see right out of the box the fans come pre-installed and the wiring is kind of neatly arranged behind the fan screws on this side of the radiator but if you do want to change the orientation of the fans you can quite easily unscrew them from the radiator put them on the opposite side and arrange the cables in a very similar orientation to how it is now. So in terms of the radiator design, not a lot has changed compared to the Liquid Freezer 2, but there are a few minor improvements according to Arctic. Very similar to the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, all the wiring runs down the tubing and it runs inside the sleeving of the tubing and down to the CPU block. Tubing length is approximately 450 millimeters long. You can see at the CPU block side, it does have some rotary 
90 degree fittings. The pump housing and CPU block is quite interesting. At the base, it's quite a conventional looking copper microscive coal plate. Comes with this little label on just to offer some protection to the base of the cooler. Doesn't come with any thermal paste pre-applied, but in with the accessories, you do get some Arctic MX-6 thermal paste, probably enough for a couple of installations. The interesting thing about the pump is the orientation. It's got this vertical orientation to how the pump is mounted. We're used to seeing the pump mounted directly on top of the coal plate, so that's quite different, very different to the liquid freezer too. On top of the contacts for the top cover and these power the VRM fan, the VRM fan has a speed range of between 400 to 2,500 RPM, PWM controlled. And then the actual mount that holds the CPU block down onto the socket is just these two screws here. And it's kind of got like a leaf spring to uh, ensure that the CPU block has the correct amount of pressure. And it's the same mounting system, whether you install this on AMD or Intel platforms. It's just the uh, the bracketry below that is different on Intel and AMD. On the side of the pump unit here, you can see there's a large electrical connection and that is for the cables that go from the CPU block to the motherboard or to a fan controller, if you're using a fan controller. The cooler actually comes with two different cables, so you use either one or the other. This is a single cable, so the control of the fan speed, the pump speed, and the VRM fan is all done through one cable to one motherboard header. Or if you prefer to have individual control over the fans, uh, the VRM fan and the pump, you can install this cable, which has three headers. So obviously one for the fans, one for the pump, and one for the VRM. With this, you will need to obviously use three motherboard headers or three headers on a fan controller. But it's good that Arctic gives you that option. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. So because the cooler uses that same mounting system for both Intel and AMD platforms, it means that the accessories that come with the cooler are quite small and it is also a very simple installation for this cooler. So with the cooler, you get a couple of brackets for AMD installation. So these screw directly to the stock AMD AM5 backplate. There are some spacers and screws for mounting to the AMD backplate and then some additional fan screws for if you need to attach the fans to the outer case or for attaching the radiator to the case, there's various different screws there to cover all options. As I've already mentioned, you get those two different cables for controlling the fan speed, pump speed and VRM fan speed. Very interesting addition to the Liquid Freezer 3 is this mount for Intel LGA 1700. So this is a Intel LGA 1700 contact frame. So for Intel installations, you completely remove this stock Intel ILM from LGA 1700 and replace it with this contact frame, which is said to improve contact between the CPU block and the actual IHS of the CPU. We've seen these from other manufacturers and they are a useful thing to have if you're running LGA 1700. So it's very interesting that's included with this cooler. Also included is a small tube of Arctic MX-6. It's a 0.8 gram tube, so I'd expect to get a couple of installations or reinstallations out of that. And you also get a Torx driver for removing the stock Intel LGA 1700 screws from the ILM. One thing that is really interesting about this cooler is that it only seems to support Intel LGA 1700. There's no other brackets or mounts for previous Intel platforms. So if you're thinking of purchasing this for an Intel 11.5X CPU, not a good idea because it doesn't seem to be supported. All the cabling is standard four pin PWM for the fan pump and VRM fan and the RGB lighting that connects via a standard three pin five volt motherboard header type connection. So let's look at the thermal performance. That's the important thing we want to see with this liquid freezer three. As always, we've run our usual test, but this time it's on both our AMD and Intel platform. So AMD 7950X and Intel LGA 1700 with a 13900K CPU. 
To load the CPU, we use Cinebench R23. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, don't forget there is a full written review page over on kitguru.net and on there it details the testing methodology. In the first of three tests on the AMD 7950X test bench, we look at the thermal performance with the CPU frequency and voltages fixed and the radiator fans, pump speed and VRM are all fixed at maximum RPM to test the cooler's raw performance. The liquid freezer the 3360 performance in this setup is superb, producing an average CPU delta temperature of 63 degrees C and almost topping the chart. Only the more expensive EK Nucleus can outperform the Liquid Freezer 3 and it uses a much higher maximum fan speed. The noise output of the Liquid Freezer 3 at maximum fan speed is very quiet so it has an advantage over the competition when we reduce fan speed to normalize noise output. In the noise normalized test the Liquid Freezer 3 again shows it has has excellent performance on the AM5 platform with an average CPU delta of 66 degrees C which means it tops the noise normalized chart. In the 7950X PBO test again the Liquid Freezer 3 shows its solid performance by cooling 201 watts package power to an average delta of 68 degrees C while holding the average clock multiplier at 51.4 times which is again right at the top of the charts and equaling the performance of more expensive 360 millimeter liquid coolers. So performance in all scenarios on AMD 7950X is great. We are still adding coolers to our Intel 13900K test bench so right now we don't have the extensive list like we do on our AMD test system. However we can compare the performance of the Liquid Freezer 3 against some other 360 millimeter AIOs including the Liquid Freezer 2 360. The Intel Core i9 13900K pulls 100 watts more package power compared to to the 7950X in our manual OC test. So it's a tougher test on the coolers. Compared with other 360 millimeter coolers that we have tested on this platform, the Liquid Freezer 3 performance isn't as impressive as it is on the AMD 7950X. The Liquid Freezer 3 360 is over 10 degrees hotter than the top coolers in this chart and it only offers a minor improvement in thermals over the Liquid Freezer 2, which is quite disappointing. Normalizing the noise output of the fans to 40 decibels gives Gives us an improvement with the Liquid Freezer 3 but it still lags behind the top coolers on the 13900K test system and again there's no significant improvement in thermals compared with the Liquid Freezer 2. In our final test on the 13900K we fixed fan speed to 1400 rpm on all coolers but again the Liquid Freezer 3 performance isn't as good as we hoped and there's no improvement in thermal performance versus the Liquid Freezer 2 360. So either the Liquid Freezer 3 is more optimized for AMD CPUs or it's simply overwhelmed by the 300 watts plus package power from the 13900K. In terms of noise output the Liquid Freezer 3 is virtually identical in noise output at maximum fan speed as the Liquid Freezer 2 since it uses the same P-series fans. So the Liquid Freezer 2 is extremely quiet at maximum fan RPM compared with most high performance coolers. So if noise is important to you then this is a great choice. And it also explains why there isn't much of a drop in thermal performance when we normalize noise to 40 decibels. So quite clearly there are some positives and reasons why you would want to buy the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 on both Intel and AMD platforms. The cooler even at maximum fan speed runs very quiet at 43 decibels. We only had to reduce fan speed by about 200 RPM to get down to 40 decibels. Noise normalized which is really good for a high performance cooler. It's much quieter than some of the other high performance coolers that are of a similar performance level on the AMD test platform. So even if you are really particular about noise output, you won't find this too distracting even at maximum fan speed. So that for me is a really strong positive as why you would buy this. For me, it has much improved looks over the Liquid Freezer 2. It looks much more high quality than the Liquid Freezer 2 did, but it still retains some of the features such as the VRM fan. I much prefer the way the Liquid Freezer 3 looks compared to the Liquid Freezer 2. It's good that it's available in those two different colors in several different sizes and with or without ARGB lighting. And thermal performance on AM5 is 
absolutely superb. Performance on Intel LJ1700 isn't as good as we would have expected it to, especially with it having that LJ1700 contact frame. It doesn't appear to be compatible with older Intel platforms, which might be a problem for some people that like to get the maximum lifespan from their hardware. One other very minor issue I have with the white version in particular, I'm not sure about the black one because I have only tested the white version, is the fan screws. They are painted white and the paint can wear off and chip off very easily. And you can see the other coating underneath that, but that is a very minor thing. You could potentially just upgrade the screws yourself by maybe some silver screws would look pretty good on this. To conclude on this one, if you're an AMD owner, if you have a 7950X or a Ryzen 7000, this is an excellent CPU cooler for that platform in terms of low noise and thermal performance. In all of our tests, the Liquid Freezer 3 360 is superb on the 7950X, cannot fault it at all. If you are an AMD owner, if you're thinking of upgrading from the Liquid Freezer 2 to the Liquid Freezer 3 on an AMD platform, I would say go for it without thinking but on the other hand if you're an intel user and you are thinking of buying this for one of the high-end intel cpus it doesn't seem like it's perfectly suited to that platform i'm not sure whether arctic optimizes the design of the pump and the cold plate to favor amd cpus more or whether the cooler was just simply overwhelmed by the 300 plus CPU package power of the 13900K in our overclock test. But it certainly seems like a better proposition. If you're on AMD, I'd say definitely buy it. I like the looks of it. The thermal performance is excellent, low noise levels, but on Intel, on performance terms, there are better AIOs out there for the 13th gen onwards CPUs. So that's the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. This is the 360 ARGB white version. You can pick this up now in the UK and the US and across Europe. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru, you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some of our merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.